What's up guys, Eric here, welcome to Rant and Review. In this video, we're gonna discuss The Flash season four episode title, Don't Run, this is the mid-season finale. So careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with The Flash this season. You've been warned, let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, in case you guys didn't know, I'm on vacation, so I'm on the road. So this video is gonna go pretty quickly. I do apologize, but let's go ahead and get down to it. Did you guys notice what Iris did at the start of this episode? She totally threw shade at Felicity over crashing their wedding during Crisis on Earth X. And I'm sure some West Allen fans have already been posting on Twitter, Tumblr, and Reddit about this. I'm actually kind of surprised they put it in the episode. It's really weird that they acknowledge that. I don't know if they thought about it after they did it and they're like, oh, we should probably acknowledge that. Uh, because a lot of fans were outraged about it. So I just thought it was kind of interesting and, and a little bit funny they put it in the beginning of the episode. And I wasn't a fan of all the corny, cringy Christmas stuff at the start. I guess Ralph was just doing something else during Crisis. He's there for the Christmas thing, but no mention of what he was doing before this. I wish they would have acknowledged that a little bit more, but they didn't. Uh, just this whole segment at the start was just... I don't know, it was a little bit too silly for me. Now let's go ahead and talk about the thinker in this episode. So he captures Barry, locks him in a speed-proof cell to teach him, teach him what exactly? What was his plan for Barry? And what I mean here is after thinking about it, I don't really see any reason for him to have actually kept Barry there except maybe to distract the team from Caitlyn, but that's only hinted at in this episode. And considering how this whole thing is set up at the start, there's no way DeVoe could have been able to know what happened inside of Star Labs leading up to all of this. So I'm just gonna call shenanigans. I know the writers were trying to lay it out to make it look that way, but it definitely could not have happened that way. It was just impossible. Now, I did like the fight between Barry and the Thinker. Once Barry outsmarts the Thinker and escapes his cell, they have a pretty cool battle while flying over Central City. However, the Thinker's chair can teleport now? That's a thing now? Well, if that's the case, then you know what? Never mind. Never mind. He's got a teleporting chair. There's no use in trying to understand it anyway. And based on what happened this week, we probably won't see the chair again. Maybe we will. I don't know. But seeing it teleport, I was like, what? What? It can teleport? And after the fight, Barry gets to use that flotation feature on his suit again. You guys remember the really silly one that we got like earlier in the season? Uh, yeah, he uses it even though the fall probably wouldn't have hurt him from the height that he was at, but whatever. Uh, the thinker's chair catches on fire. He crashes into the water and then we forget about him. I mean, they say they scanned his house, <laughs> but they didn't bother to search the water. They said, do you think he really drowned? Well, you didn't go looking for him. You didn't use tech to scan down there to see if that actually happened. <sighs> they didn't really follow up on this because of plot. Yes, that is the reason why. They, they couldn't because then they would have determined that he hadn't drowned, but they couldn't do that based on what we get at the end of this episode. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, they got a Christmas party to deal with, so they had to speed through this. Uh, but let's talk about the Caitlyn and Amunet stuff because that's kind of important. So in my opinion, the biggest win for tonight's episode was all the stuff revolving around Caitlyn. After the team is basically giving her crap at the start of the episode about Killer Frost being cooler than her. Get it? Cooler? Okay. <laughs> but anyway, you know, the once evil and somewhat questionable Killer Frost is just the life of the party. Everybody loves her. Everybody loves a good bad guy who knows how to have fun. Let's just rub that in Caitlyn's face because that's not insulting at all. But it is, and it's also kind of stupid. But we don't have time to worry about that. Amunet snags her, takes her to an old hospital to work on this newly introduced metahuman, Brainstorm. Uh, his name is Dominic Lance, but we end up calling him Brainstorm, or Cisco does. Um, he has short range telepathy, which is still pretty cool. Uh, Amunet hit him with one of her metal shards and basically needs Caitlyn to save him because she says he's important to her and she's got to buy her and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know how it is. Now, as much as I love Katie Sackoff, I hate her fake accent as Amunet. It is one of the biggest turnoffs for me when it comes to this character. I wish they wouldn't have gone in that direction with her. She doesn't really need it. And I mean, considering they went to the trouble of having, you know, uh, DeVoe be South African to keep the actor's accent intact. It was just weird that they went with this choice for her because I think they could have achieved the same tone and personality for Amunet without using the really bad fake accent. Either way, we get a great pep talk from Amunet and Caitlin is feeling way more empowered and manages to escape with Brainstorm without having to use her Killer Frost powers. And then once they're outside of the building, they're picked up by Ralph and Sisko. And then Sisko cracks a really weird, cringy white girl dreads joke. Seriously, Flash writers, what are you doing this season? This episode had so many really, really bad jokes in it. And when I heard that, I was like, 
What? I also came to the conclusion that Ralph is literally the worst stereotype that they could have on the show this season, considering what's going on behind the scenes with Andrew Kreisberg and everything. I mean, it's just such an odd time to have a character like this on the show. I mean, you want us to like him, right? I mean, dial him back like three or four points and let us get to know him. His personality right now feels very forced. And every time he hits on a female character on the show, I'm just like, why is he hitting on every woman that he comes in contact with? Now we can go back to that Christmas party I was talking about earlier. And we have Brainstorm, who's invited to their big Christmas party. You guys remember Brainstorm, right? The meta that was captured by Amunet was injured almost killed and Caitlyn had to come in and save him. That same person that escaped with Caitlyn that we never had a follow-up with after he jumped through the breach with the rest of the team, he just kind of vanished into thin air. Yeah, okay, so that character, <laughs> he was invited to their Christmas party. Um, so I guess the team just let him go without any help, conversation, emergency button, telephone number, speed dial, nothing. They just let him go. But they invited him over for uh, the party and surprise, surprise, we have a switcheroo with this character. I mean, what a totally new and fresh idea. It's not like we've ever done this in the past, you know, had a person pretending to be someone else when they're actually evil or terrorizing the team under a totally fake identity or having a character that can mind control other people and make them do what they want. This is totally an original idea. We've never had something like this on The Flash before. I'm so surprised that they went this route. But all jokes aside, what gets me about this is how it all went down. We get the reveal of all this information in like the worst way possible. A series of quickly edited and chopped up random flashbacks at the last minute, laying out everything that has happened leading up to this point. So the thinker and the mechanic somehow had time to get Amunet to pick up the meta that was just captured and released, basically rescued by our team. He was let out on the street, probably for less than a couple of hours. I assume this is record time. Amunet had time to do all of this and find out where he was that quickly. Like, what was the point of even rescuing him? Then the thinker proceeds to transfer his brain into Brainstorm's body. Not just mind control here, a full-on transfer of consciousness, at least as far as we can tell right now. Um, so yeah, we have a bad guy who looks like someone else, a supposed friend of the team. I'm sorry if I feel a bit jaded about this, but they're doing something that we've already seen before. We've, we've had this happen just about every single season. And I was kind of hoping that if he did use mind control, it would be done in a different way instead of like infiltrating someone that the team thinks is a good guy. But no, we're just going to go with the same old stuff that we've done before. I mean, come on, Flash Riders. You guys can do better than this. However, as sloppy as all of that was, we get one of the best setups possible after this mess of a narrative where Barry goes back to the apartment and finds the body of the thinker Clifford DeVoe on the ground. Uh, but then he also gets a phone call from Brainstorm, who reveals he is the thinker. Why? <laughs> Why would he do this? How much better would this have been if we the viewers had no idea what was going on? Subtract the scene showing the transfer, subtract the scene where Brainstorm calls explaining that he's a thinker and what he did, remove Brainstorm from the Christmas party altogether, just show Barry showing up at the apartment with DeVoe's body on the floor and him being framed. That would have been so much better because that would have left a ton of mystery going into the next episode after the mid-season finale, but instead we know everything. We know it all. And yes, it's setting up the trial of the flash which i think is going to be awesome barry allen on trial this is going to be great and that part i like but all of this extra narrative it was like explaining too much it was almost too spoilery for me as i'm watching the episode i'm like don't tell us everything give us some mystery here and i guess that's part of what's bugged me about the flash this season in general is there hasn't been a lot of mystery i mean just think about it we could have had a scene at the start of the next episode showing us all of this stuff, how all of it was achieved at the beginning of that episode. Or just show Brainstorm walking out of the house and getting picked up by the mechanic at the end of this episode. No lines, just visuals. Just seeing him walk out of the house with a little swag, the mechanic picks him up, done and done. You know, the thinker is smart, methodical. He's not this crazy mustache twirling villain who beats his chest whenever he needs to tell somebody stuff about his plan. Like, I, I don't get this. This was totally out of character for him. It's like when he switched bodies, he switched personalities. Yes, he talked the same, but he was acting very different. I, I don't know. There was no reason for him to reveal to Barry that he had switched bodies. None. There was no reason for this. But overall, just like Supergirl, in a lot of ways, this did not feel like a mid-season finale to me. It felt like the lead up to a mid-season finale. I'm beginning to wonder if having the big crossover event right before these episodes 
happened to hurt the episodes. I'm thinking maybe it did because it feels like that may have impacted it a little bit. Um, you know, the last part of this episode was, was good. I think I enjoyed the fight scenes and some of the stuff that happened and the setup for what's going to come after we come back. Uh, but the middle and the beginning of it was just like the narrative was really weird. It was messy. The pacing was off. I enjoyed the stuff with Caitlin, Killer Frost, and Munette. Did not really like the stuff with Barry and the thinker and the mechanic. And the stuff going on back at Star Labs was kind of like, eh. I mean, yeah, Iris had to make a decision. But did she really? Did she really? I mean, just all of it felt like, I don't know what the writers were thinking with this. The jokes were bad. Uh, Ralph Dibney was completely unloved this episode. I could not get into anything he was doing. So, yeah, again, it wasn't a horrible episode. It was mediocre to me, um, but the setup was really strong. The setup was strong. Uh, moving forward, we're going to have a different person playing the thinker now. So I'm going to see how that's going to work out because I love Neil Sandilands as a thinker. So having somebody else play this character um, without all the bells and whistles that we got with the chair and stuff, I don't know if we're going to see the chair again. Maybe the body will still deteriorate. I, I'm really completely lost on that. Um, but anyway, let me know what you guys thought about, uh, this episode. I'm going to go ahead and give it, I'm going to give it the same thing I gave Supergirl an eight out of 10. Um, it wasn't horrible. It was above average in terms of special effects and, uh, you know, some of the fight scenes and a, a lot of the dialogue between our main characters was pretty solid, but everything else was just kind of fluff and messy. And, and yeah, the stuff between Caitlin and Amunet was really, in my opinion, the strongest parts of the episode. But again, let me know what you think about this episode down in the comments below. Um, anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Take care. Have a great day. Have a great week. And I will catch you later. Hey guys, Eric here. Hope you enjoyed my video. If you want to become part of the Eric verse, make sure you subscribe, like, and leave a comment on this video. All of my information is down in the info box, all my social links, my Patreon, all of that good stuff. Join the community, become part of this little world here on YouTube, and go ahead and check out some of my videos over here. I got some great content if you want to keep exploring my channel. Thanks again. Take care.